Okay, let's do this. So inside this video, we're gonna cover enemies of the database, how to create proper enemies, everything you need to know, and also how to arrange those inside battle troops to create combats. So let's get started. So once you've opened your database and went inside the enemies tab, this is where you will find the list of every single enemies available inside your database. And as always, you can change the maximum if you need. Now inside the general settings, this is where you'll be able to get the name of those enemies and also set the parameters, whether it is the maximum health, maximum mana points, the attack, defense, magic attack, and whatnots of that particular enemy. By double clicking on the image, it will bring you inside the menu of every single asset available for those enemies. Take note that these particular images are related to the folder depending on which type of combat you're using. So that means that if you go inside the system one tab right over here, you will see that for the battle screen, you have front view and side view. Hey, what you want? <laughs> okay, sorry about that. So what I was saying is that if you are set inside the battle screen on the front view, then the assets will be taken from the enemies folder, while if you select the side view, then the assets will be picked from the SV enemies folder. And so, even if you may not notice a difference with the basic assets, let me just show you a quick example. If I take the actor one underscore three over here, as you can see right now on the eyes, it's looking on the right. Now, if I go back inside system one and set on front view instead, that same enemies is now looking forward. So these are different folders with different assets. So just keep in mind that the images are not exactly the same between both systems. And so if you're using or importing your own assets, make sure to import them inside the correct folder so that you won't encounter this issue. Now under the general settings, we also have the rewards, which is the experience points attributed to the whole party once the enemy is defeated and also the amount of gold inside the drop items if you click on it you can decide whether the enemies drop an item inside the database a weapon and or an armor and also the probability that this enemy is gonna drop it so it can be one on ten one on one for 100 percent chance one on two for 50 percent chance 33 percent chance and so on and so forth now, I'm not really a big fan of this probability system because it's excessively limited. So we'll see in another video how you can build your home plugins to be able to bypass that. Now for traits. Enemies have the exact same traits possibilities as actors and classes and everything you've seen so far. So if you want to make them more vulnerable or more resistant to specific elements, this is where you do it. That's the same for if you want to make them immune to specific states, have them attack with different elements, applying states on attacks, and whatnot. Everything is being set here so that you can create the monsters that you want to have specifically. Now last but not the least is the action patterns. This is where you will configure the intelligence of your monsters so that they will behave and apply skills whenever you need them to. So from applying different skills on specific turns, let's say on the first one and every two turns after that, we could have him perform a dual attack. Also, you will have, if he's between a specific range of health, let's say that he's very, very low on health, between zero and 30%, this is when he's gonna try to test ill on himself and so on and so forth. So as you can see, the condition can be anything related to the specific turn, the health and mana points that you're in state he's on, the average level party, and also if a switch has been turned on. Now the only thing that you probably don't know about yet is the rating. The rating is the chances that the monster will perform that skills when the conditions are met. So the higher the rating, the better the chances that it will use that skill. Now be careful. Because if the rating is too high compared to the other's ratings, then this skill is going to always 100% of the time be used no matter what are the possibilities of the other skills. So that means, for instance, that if I use dual attack on the second turn and every two turns after that, so on turn 2, 5, 8, and so, forth, so on and so forth, with a rating of 9, 
now that means that I'm in 100% guaranteed here that it's always going to use that and it's never going to use the attack or body slam when the conditions are met for the dual attack because the rating is too high compared to the rating 5 over here. Now if for instance I'm using the rate 9, that means that anything that is 6 or under is never going to even be considered by the systems. Only the rating currently where the conditions are met with the two scores below will be considered for that particular turn. So that means that once again on the second turn if the rating is 9 for dual attack and I create another action pattern that I give a rating of 7 if the HP is between 0 and 30% which will be the skill let's say I don't know let's take lullaby for some reason because why not now if on the second turn and the fifth and the eighth and so on and so forth the rating is 9 but if the also the condition for the lullaby is met and the rating is 7 there's still a chance that lullaby will be cast because the rating 7 isn't too far from 9 now the better chances here in that condition will be that dual attack will go through but the possibility for lullaby still remains now the same goes that if it wasn't the second or the fifth or the eighth turn but the health of our enemy here will be between 0 and 30% there's still a chance that it will use attack or body slams because the highest rating currently for this specific turn will be 7 and 5 is only 2 rating below 7 so that means that while 7 has the greatest chance to go through and that means that he's most likely to cast lullaby you may see him perform attacks or body slams now if the rating for those two specific steals were 4 instead the lullaby steal will go through 100% of the time so always remember that the current conditions are met the system always looks for the highest rating and then it's going to look for every single rating that is one or two below the current highest one so if the is is seven the system is going to check for any rating that is six or five and then it's just going to roll at random to see which chill goes through while still considering that this rating seven has the better odds of going through than the six and the six has better odds than the five but it's never gonna select something that is rating four three two one because the seven is just too far from those numbers now for the second part of the video is troops which is basically where you're gonna see the real combats and counters happening inside your game so enemies are not combat encounters they are simply enemies configurations the real combat happens inside troops that means that right here if i was to start a combat with troop id 1 my players will be fighting two goblins at once so if you want a single goblin combat you would have to come and change the maximum and then just add a new goblin inside the combat you can use the older name here to give it a proper name quickly for that combat specifically and there we go the combat is all set you can start the combat with id6 which will be a single goblin that the party will be fighting now keep in mind that the positions of the monsters can be readjusted however you would like and that the background image that you see here can be changed but only for your own testing purposes that means that this is not what determines what the background is going to look like inside the game it's only for your own testing if you want to see how the position of the enemy looks like based on different based on different backgrounds specifically now if you want to test the combat you can always click on battle test from there you'll be able to select exactly which actors you want to bring with you inside the combat so let's say that i only want one actor so the uh, tab 2 is flushed so is the tab 3 and the tab 4 i don't want any actor except for read here you can change the equipment however you'd like for that particular encounter you can also initialize a level for your actor which will be able to from there see his status what will be his health his attack and blah 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 and if you click on ok the combat will be launching and so we're inside a front view system right now that means that this is what the combat looks like once again if i go inside system one and switch for a side view instead and go back inside my troops 
click on battle test once again and then I just click OK once uh, once more. And the combat is going to emerge and from there I'm able to fight with the goblin and see exactly how the combat will go. In that case it will be excessively easy. Now keep note that inside the battle test the initialize will only reset your character to the current default values that are stored inside the database for that specific actor. Now one last thing I want to show you before we end the video for today is the battle events. Now the battle events are basically some events that can happen once a combat or once per turn or until the condition are met by selecting the spawn right over here. So battle is for once per combat, turn is for once per turn if the condition is met and moment is as long as the condition is respected this will run. Now if for the specific combat let's go with once per combat and the condition that I want met is on let's say the first turn is met so on the first turn I want this to show up so let's say that you want to implement dialogues inside your combat this is how you could do it so I will pick read and just have him say like we're gonna die <laughs> so this specific dialogue box if we test the combat is gonna show up on the first turn so let's just try it So currently this turn one, there we go, we just enter turn one, you're gonna die! <laughs> and that's it. And so this is how you can have f special things and cool tricks happening during combat, specifically like for boss battles, like have the heroes have a chat during the combat to increase the drama. This is how you can do it. Okay, so that's it for today's video on enemies and combats. Make sure to like, subscribe, whatever, and I'll see you soon for another video. Bye! Okay, bye.